if anybody challenges us, they will be they will be met with uh, with a, a severe response. That's Mark Esper, a former top lobbyist at Raytheon, the giant defense contractor, and the U.S. current Secretary of Defense. He's second in command to the president, charged with leading all the armed forces. But who is Mark Esper? I'm not. I'm comedian Mohanad Al Sheikhi, and this is a little story about a high-powered lobbyist turned guy who stands to benefit from his former lobbying. Mark Thomas Esper was born in 1964 in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, home of the Big Mac, meaning two potentially dangerous threats to mankind hail from the same town. That's pretty neat. Esper is a graduate of the famous 1986 class of West Point, which included Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, among other Trump administration officials. The West Point Academy's honor code reads, a cadet will not lie, cheat, steal, or tolerate those who do, which seems worth noting for some reason. After West Point, Esper served in the Gulf War. He received a Bronze Star and a Combat Infantryman Badge for his service in Iraq. He served more than a decade on active duty. In 1996, Esper became Chief of Staff at the Heritage Foundation, a conservative think tank funded by political mega-donors like Rebecca Mercer and Betsy DeVos. Later, he worked as a senior policy advisor for Senator Chuck Hagel, a guy who voted for the war in Iraq. Cool policy advising. Hagel would later be hired by the Obama administration to serve as the country's Secretary of Defense. Esper would go on to work in the George W. Bush administration as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Negotiations Policy at the Pentagon. In 2010, Esper was hired as Vice President of Government Relations at Raytheon, where he spent seven years as a defense contractor's top lobbyist, making sure the U.S. government bought as much weaponry from them as possible. Raytheon does billions of dollars of business with the U.S. government each year, and during Esper's tenure, Raytheon posted record federal lobbying spending in 2013, dishing out $7.6 million. Esper is essentially the face of what President Eisenhower termed the military-industrial complex, or the relationship between the military and the companies that make military equipment. And now, Mark Esper is the Secretary of Defense. One interesting sidebar, Esper was confirmed two days before Trump, according to a whistleblower, asked Ukraine to quote, do us a favor and investigate his political rival, the Bidens. And if they didn't, he would withhold hundreds of millions of dollars in military aid. Just an hour and 45 minutes after the phone call on July 25th, Trump welcomed Mark Esper in full honors ceremony on the Pentagon's parade field. During Esper's confirmation hearing, Senator Elizabeth Warren called on him to recuse himself from matters involving Raytheon. You're prohibited from participating in any decisions involving Raytheon for two years after your appointment as Army Secretary. But because you have already been in government for 20 months, that recusal period is set to expire in November, which means you will soon be able to participate personally and substantially in matters involving your former employer. That's a conflict of interest given that Raytheon does billions of dollars worth of business every year with the Defense Department. Esper stands to benefit from Raytheon's success. He's entitled to at least $1 million in deferred compensation, and there's nothing stopping him from lining the pockets of his former colleagues. Senator Elizabeth Warren knows this, and she kept pushing. I recently introduced legislation to block the revolving door between the Pentagon and giant defense contractors like Raytheon by prohibiting big defense contractors from hiring former senior DOD officials for four years after they leave government. If it were the law, you couldn't go back to work at Raytheon or any other defense contractor immediately. In other words, it would help close the revolving door. If confirmed, will you commit not to work for or get paid by any defense contractor for at least four years after your government service? No, Senator, I will not. Esper was confirmed 90 to 8. He is not willing to make a commitment that he will not engage in conflicts of interest Thank you, Mr. for the Chairman. company for which he was a lobbyist. This is outrageous. Thank you. Esper is in charge of the military's budget, which stands at $738 billion. It's a mind-boggling amount of money. Critics argue a percentage of that money should be spent to help the American people in the form of universal health care and or free college tuition for all Americans instead of war. After all, the United States military spends as much as the next eight countries combined. It's almost as if we were warned this would happen nearly 60 years ago. Oh wait, we were. In the councils of government, we must guard against 
the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. It's unclear whether or not Esper will work closely with Raytheon throughout the rest of his time in the Pentagon. After he leaves the government, he might spin around once more in the revolving door, all the way back to a giant defense contractor, who might then be in a better place because of the work he accomplished while in the government. Raytheon stock surged by 1.5% after the U.S. assassinated Qasem al-Suleimani, and a president with Twitter fingers will only fatten Esper's already fat wallet. Hey, thanks for watching Who Is? Did you know we have a podcast now too? On Who Is, the podcast, I'll dive deep into the fascinating lives of the people who run things, whose decisions impact every aspect of our lives. How did they get where they are today? And knowing that, what might they do next? From politicians to the ultra rich, to military contractors and monarchs and media moguls, I'll introduce you to the reporters and experts who know these real life world molders best sharp-eyed observers and confidants who observe our subjects as they make the decisions that define our everyday lives. To see more, hit the link or search Who Is on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more of the video series you know and love, be sure to check out the Snapchat versions and our series playlists on YouTube and Facebook.